Hi everyone, Anya Fernald here, co-founder of Belcampo. Since many of us are at home, I thought I would share a few of my favorite home recipes uh, for great healthy foods that you can make um, and sort of dig through the meats in your freezer and fridge. Uh, what I've got here is a uh, four pound piece of chuck roll. So this is a large piece of beef stewing meat. Uh, the chuck roll comes really from the part connecting neck to shoulder in the, in the beef. So it's got lots of great connective tissue in it. Meat that has a lot of connective tissue, you'll see just these kind of streaks of yellowish um, cartilaginous tissue that connects the muscles. Now, if you bought your beef already chunked into stew meat, awesome. You're one step ahead of me. You can forward ahead. Um, if you bought a large piece of meat, uh, you can just work with me as we just clean it up. What I'm going to do is just remove any pieces of um, extra muscular uh, fat that have discolored that might give the meat a little bit of an off flavor. That discoloration is just due to oxidation. Um, as I work the beef and as I took it out of the bag, I see a little bit of a red liquid coming off of it. Do not worry. This is not blood. Um, it's just myoglobin and water. Uh, this meat was frozen. Those of you who are working with frozen product, that is going to naturally put off a little bit more water because as the meat freezes, it breaks the muscle tissue. And as it thaws, so the, the ice breaks the muscle tissue. And as it thaws, uh, that water will, will leach out of the muscles. So once I've just removed any bits of kind of brownish, discolored um, meat from the ex outside of the, of the cut, I'm simply going to cut this into uh, chunks that are about uh, two by two inches. Now, since I'm going to be braising this into a beautiful beef braise, um, I want to be, you know, not too concerned about any type of connective tissue um, or cartilage. It's all going to just really seep into the braise as I go. And um, I don't need to clean it out because that's actually what the moisture and the process of cooking it will do. So let me just show you close up. This is what a piece looks like, right? About, this is actually three inches by one inch. Uh, I'll work the whole piece of this into my stew meat and then take it over to the stove. So I've cut up my whole uh, big chunk of beef. There it is. Now other cuts you could use for this. You can make this out of brisket. You can make this out of any number of different things. Uh, and the key thing is just a, a cut with a lot of connective tissue that's gonna render out and make it very, very tender. One thing I wanna note is that Big chunks of fat like that, you don't want it on the stew meat. You're just going to end up rendering it out and throwing it away. So I recommend you, you do a quick visual scan for big chunks of fat. Take those off. Um, and we're going to take this over to the stove and sear this load of beautiful meat up. Okay, so I have about a half a cup of oil in my large cast iron. I'm using olive oil for this. You can also use an avocado oil, a ghee, or tallow. I'm just gonna space my meat here. I want to get a nice brown on this and just on two sides is fine. The browning is gonna help the chunks of meat really stay nice and intact as this meat gets braised for many, many hours. You can also do this without browning. The consistency will be more like a pulled pork if you do so. So I'm gonna work my way through this. Key thing here is don't overcrowd the pan. Put these guys in piece by piece and just wait till you get a nice brown on each side and then flip it over. So I'll show you for a few pieces here. All of my meat is browned and as I've been browning it like this, little bits of brown, I move it to a stock pot that I have ready to go where I'm gonna be actually braising the meat. So I take it all out of my browning pan. And the batching is key just because you want to get a nice sear on all sides. Now in this pan here, I have lots of little bits of brown meat that's stuck in there that's going to be really delicious. But I don't want to use this pan itself to braise because it's so wide and low. And the wide and low pan is not ideal for the braising because you're going to get too much evaporation, okay? So I actually want to make sure that in the braising, I'm in a high-sided pan that's deep, that I can cover it with liquid. So to get all those yummy brown bits off the pan here, what am I going to do? 
I'm actually gonna deglaze it with onion. So this is a very simple recipe, only the, really the three ingredients, four if you count the olive oil. And I'm just gonna load this up with onions. And you'll see that the onions are gonna actually pull the bits of brown off the bottom of my cast iron. Once this is browned, I'll add my tomato sauce and water to this pan here. I've got a couple little bits of beef that I'm finishing up here, but I'll add the tomato sauce to this and I will then take all of the brown bits off the bottom of the pan uh, via the water and the liquid and I'll be able to pour all of that into my braising pan here and I'll be done. So you can take the last of these little brown pieces out and you can see now as I just start to throw these in, these will immediately pick up color and pick up that, those little brown bits off the bottom of the pan. So this stage of the cooking of the onions in the leftover brown bits, that's gonna be about another five minutes. So I'll show you once that's all done. Onions are nicely browned and smelling super caramelized. I could add lots of different herbs at this point, like some thyme, even rosemary, but I'm keeping it super simple for you guys, just something you can kind of whip up and have ready to go. I'm gonna add my salt right now, and I'm adding a full two tablespoons of salt. Keep in mind how much meat I have there, right? Next up, I'm gonna add this whole jar of tomatoes. This is a tomato puree that I use, and um, you could also use a spaghetti sauce, although you probably want to correct for the salt, um, or just take canned tomatoes and puree them like in a Cuisinart. So I put this whole quart or so, yeah, of tomato puree in there. And then I'm also gonna add uh, four cups of water. So at this point, my pan is totally deglazed, okay? There's really no brown yummy bits left on the bottom. I've got all those onions in there. And I'm gonna take this liquid and pour it over the meat. So I'm gonna reunite the meat with all of its cooking mojo. Okay, there we go. Braise is ready. I'm gonna pop this into my oven now for a minimum of five hours and the very maximum about six hours and it's gonna get incredibly tender. I'll put the lid on it when it's in the oven and I'm gonna put it at 250 degrees. Were I to do this on the stove top, three hours would be sufficient because the heat would be a little bit higher. I'll show you when it comes out. Hi guys, so my stew spent six hours in the oven and just came out beautifully tender. What I did then is took five pounds of potatoes, peeled and halved them, and about 10 carrots, peeled them and chunked them and threw them in there. Brought that to the boil and let it fully uh, tenderize the vegetables, turned off the heat, let it cool, and next day, this is what I've got. Beautiful stew for days, smells fabulous. In terms of the taste here, I simply added a little bit of sherry vinegar to it and I like that to balance the, um, the kind of richness with some acidity. Other things I'd love to add to this if I had them around here would be um, some fresh thyme, uh, maybe a little uh, couple sprigs of um, fresh rosemary as well. Um, cracked black pepper is going in the pot next. And this is awesome, not just as a soup um, served with you know rice or some kind of grain or pasta. These chunks of meat are actually also awesome, just crumbled up and tossed into a taco. Hope this recipe is useful. Stay tuned to this channel for more of this good stuff from a home kitchen. Take care, y'all.